Did an LTTE mole find its way to 10 Janpath and pass on crucial information before Rajiv Gandhi's assassination? That's the sensational claim in a book by former aide of the Gandhis. Here's an exclusive interview with the former Union Home Secretary R.D. Pradhan. He reveals all on his book titled My Years with Rajiv and Sonia. Another book and yet another startling revelations about the Gandhis. This time it's related to Rajiv Gandhi assassination. I have with me Mr. R.D. Pradhan, former Union Home Secretary and who has worked very closely with the Gandhis, particularly with Rajiv Gandhi and uh, Sonia Gandhi. The book this time claims that there was possibly a mole in 10 Janpat that a person could have possibly passed on crucial information to the LTT about Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, Mr. Pradhan is with me. Sir, thanks a lot for talking to headlines today, sir. Your book says that there could have been a, possibly a mole in 10 Janpat. Can you elaborate on that? Well, I don't know what I can elaborate. The fact is, how did the LTT and the people who were sitting for staying far away from Delhi, Sri Parambur, they came to know what was the change in Rajiv Gandhi's program. Because he left Delhi, he went to Bhubaneswar. From Bhubaneswar, he flew to Hyderabad. In Hyderabad, his plane got into difficulty and he almost or rather it was he decided not to proceed further and then suddenly the plane was all right and he reached madras that is that time it was madras not chennai and then he went to sripirabdu now my point was we started working backward as to how is it that the ltt people who were there knew exactly what time Rajiv Gandhi would arrive as Sri Parambu. What would be the program? What would be the stage? How did they know all that? According to me, this information must have flown from Delhi. And in Delhi, no one knew this information except a very select people in the Tenjanpat, including me. And one person or two persons who were in charge in the control room at the All India Congress Committee. Therefore, working backward, I came to the conclusion that there must be more. And I think this point has been written more extensively by Subramanian Swami in his book. He has said, and also Jain Commission also has read the same point. That how did the information go? So all this put together, I came to the conclusion that there was possibility of a mole with an tangent. And I have given the impression that I have formed that later on, because Surya Gandhi after his assassination also started looking into as to how it could have happened. And I believe, I believe she also came to a similar conclusion. So you worked uh, closely with uh, Sonia Gandhi uh, post-assassination. So was there any uh, conversation between you and Sonia Gandhi pertaining to this particular aspect of uh, mole in Tenjanpat? No. You know, the tragedy was too big. And it took some time for us, for me to write that. Because this came only after the Yen Commission report came out, which also took another four years. Mm -hmm. So it's not that immediately after that inquiry started. All these things took time. And there was an inquiry, there were two inquiries, Verma Commission report and there was a Jain Commission report. So this took time. So this must have been another five years later. But uh, was this brought to the notice of the Verma Commission or the Jain Commission, this particular aspect? I was not a party to that. I do not know where what was brought. But there is a indication in the Jain Commission that there is a possibility of, and therefore they ask investigation to be made by CBI into this aspect. They recommended investigation by CBI. Now, I do not know what, what has happened to that investigation. Okay, sir. Coming to uh, other issues, uh, there are some revelations coming in about the Gandhi family recently. There's a book by uh, Mr. K. Natwa Singh, who has worked very closely with the uh, Gandhis. Uh, one pertaining to Rahul, uh, Rajiv Gandhi's functioning and another about Sonia Gandhi declining to becoming the Prime Minister. Uh, now, you've worked closely with Ra uh, Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, Natwa Singh claims that when he had sent peace, uh, troops to Sri Lanka, he, uh, no uh, senior bureaucrat was consulted. Now, though you may not, may not have been very close to uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi at that point of time, but you work closely with him. Do you think this would have happened the way Rajiv Gandhi used to function? 
You know, I can't say because at that time I was governor in Arunachal Pradesh. Mm-hmm. So I cannot say what he has written at that time. And what is not within my knowledge, I have not written. No, but about Rajiv Gandhi, you work closely with Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi, the kind of person he was, the kind of administrator he was. Do you see uh, any point in uh, the revelations that have been made? Was Rajiv Gandhi functioning that way? You know, I don't want to indulge in any speculation. Really not. Because it would not be correct on my part. I really have no comments. Uh, sir, another issue that also comes in your book about Sonia Gandhi in 1999 uh, when she had met uh, the then uh, president uh, with the support of 272 uh, MPs and she felt that it was a kind of a mistake that she has committed. Can you throw more light on that episode that is in your book? Yeah, that I can because I was working as her personal aide and advisor and I was in charge of Congress President's office within the AICC. And we were monitoring what was going on because Bajpayee government fell according to me according on 16th of April 1999. Then 17th onwards the political process started. Now since the Congress party had brought down the Bajpayee government, naturally Congress party had to decide what to tell the president because you don't bring a government down. If you have brought one government down, the democratic traditions or parliamentary traditions require that you go and tell the president what is what, whether they claim to form another government. And when it was decided that Mrs. Gandhi should go and claim that a Congress party-led government will be formed, at that time, I had a talk with her and it was decided that she would tell the president that we will form a Congress-led government and we will not indulge into whether what is the number of available to the Congress party, party members and supporters. That was left because what had happened when P. V. Narasim Rao formed a government, Congress party, he also didn't have any parliamentary majority. He went to the house and got a vote of confidence because what happens when the majority party forms the government, other small parties and independents decide what they should do. And the government was formed. So we expected a similar type of action in 1999. Unfortunately, it seems that, and what she said after coming out, after meeting Rashtrapati Ji Narayanan, Rashtrapati Abdul Kalam, that no, it was Narayan at that time. She said that I think I messed up because I mentioned a figure of 272. So that is on record. So I have nothing and then history took its own course and we couldn't form a government, that is the Congress party. Parliament was dissolved, election was held and Mr. Bajpai became the, governor, the Prime Minister of the BJP party and he was in power for five years. Uh, but Sonia Gandhi admitting that it was a mistake to meet uh, the president at that point of time, how did that reflect? Uh, no, it was not a mistake to beat the president. Mistake on her part was to tell the president that we have 272 members. That's all. But how does that reflect uh, the political personality of Sonia Gandhi since you have worked with her? Because that also is a uh, way linked uh, to the claims made by Natwar Singh that she uh, denounced uh, to become the Prime Minister only because of the family pressure. You see, you must realize, she became the Congress President under compulsion of the Congress leaders in 1998. She had decided not to get involved with politics of the Congress Party. But when all the Congress leaders, including Sitaram Kesari, Shrat Pawar, mm-hmm. Arjun Singh, all of them went to her and they said we would like you to become Congress President. Mm-hmm. And then she found that a party with which her family had been associated for generations, mm-hmm. how could she say no? And she became Congress President. That was in 1998. And this drama took place in April 99 that within a few months of her becoming Congress President. Mm -hmm. So, it is quite correct that she was not fully familiar with everything of the parliamentary practices of what is to be done. Mm -hmm. She was not fully familiar. Mm -hmm. But she learnt a lot and she was a quick learner and by 2004 she was ready to face the situation. 
But then, uh, since you've known the Gandhi family so closely, and this episode of Rahul Gandhi asking her mother not to become the prime minister because he also had fears. That's what Nadwa Singh claims that uh, his mother may also be assa- uh, may be assassinated like his father or his grandmother. So, do you think that would have played a role? I don't know because I was not present at that meeting. I don't want to comment on wh- where I was not present. He has said, and also that the wordings of that page is such. I do not know whether Rahul was present at that meeting or not. Mm-hmm. He has mentioned the persons who were present at meeting, but he has not mentioned that Rahul was present. Mm-hmm. But expre- what if what was expressed by Rahul and to whom I don't know. Perhaps he expressed it to that person or to someone else. I do not know, and I do, we don't wish to comment on something about of which I have no knowledge. Well, sir, thanks a lot for giving your time uh, to Atlantis today. Thank you so much. Thank you.